morning everybody today we shall do with the first elegy prescribed to us it is john dunn's elegy number 3 change john dunn 1572 to 1631 was born on january 22 1572 in london his father was a merchant and belonged to a pure roman catholic family he also remained a roman catholic for a short period and later converted into anglicanism probably in the year 1593 he got education in law languages and theology he completed his education at hart's hall oxford and at lincoln's inn he had command over english and latin and he wrote poems in both the languages he became the secretary to sir thomas egerton lord keeper of the great seal in 1601 he secretly married ann more egerton's niece against the will of his father-in-law george more who was lieutenant of the tower he lost his position as a result because of this marriage in 1615 he took holy orders and in 1621 he became the dean of saint paul and he continued to deanship till his death in 1631 Dunn went from being a Catholic to a Protestant. He was an apostate, a person who abandons a belief. This religious switch can be seen in much of Dunn's imagery. Many of the poems he wrote are erotic love poems. In the later half half of his life, when he became ill, his tone shifted towards more pious and grave. The broken heart, the canonization, the flea. the sun rising a valediction forbidding morning divine meditation are some of the finest works of poetry contributed by dun to english literature all the poetical works by dun have reflections of metaphysical metaphors he was one of the exponents of the metaphysical poetry that flourished in the late 16th and the 17th centuries Metaphysical poetry is characterized by complex ideas, conceits, and surprising symbols. Such features are illustrated by Dunn in his works like the poets uh, George Herbert, Andrew Marvell, and other contemporaries. He was the pioneering metaphysical poet who wrote both love poetry and divine poetry. The present elegy that is prescribed to us. Elegy number three is titled as "Change." The poem "Elegy Three Change" by John Donne is a fine example of formal and sustained lament in the verse form. It seems that he wrote elegies in different situations in his life. In it, the poet frivolously tried to defend women's fickle-minded love in an ironical manner. He freely compares women with birds and beasts for change their mates without discretion saying that women are like flowing waters and they are sweet only when they are mobile in their love relationships Let's do with the poem which is very short but expresses the change of women's love in this world Dunn starts the poem by saying although thy hand and faith and good works too have sealed thy love with nothing should undo yes though thou fall back that apostasy apostasy is renunciation of religious beliefs apostasy confirm thy love yet much much i fear thee women are like the arts forced unto none upon to all searchers unprized if unknown the very first part of the poem dun makes his stand very clear that women are very free and fickle minded in the love and in an ironical way he expresses how women change their love to different people in different situations he continues and he says open to all searchers unprized if unknown if i have caught a bird and let him fly another fowler using these means as i may catch the same bird so he compares the woman's love to a bird which is let loose which would be caught by another fowler fowler is a bird hunter and as these things be women are made for men not him nor me 
Oh, this is the patriarchal idea of John Donne, where he says, women are made for men, and foxes and goats and all beasts change when they please. So he compares the women and the women's love to birds and beasts, like foxes and goats, all beasts change when they please. So they change in making love to various mates, and similarly are women making love to different men. Shall women, more hot, wily, wild than these, be bound to one man? A rhetorical question that has been asked by the poet is to mean that women would not stick on to one man in making love, but they change, just like the birds do and the beasts do. Shall women more hot, wily and wild than these be bound to one man? And did nature then idly make them apter to endure than men? Apter, appropriate than men. This question exactly gives a negative answer that women do not stick on to one man at all in their lives. They are our clogs. Clog is a wooden piece, a piece of wood. Not their own. If a man be chained to a galley, galley is a small ship casts all his seed corn there who hath a plow land casts all his seed corn there and yet allows his ground more corn should bear now all these rhetorical questions are asked by the poet by explaining that women do not have fidelity for um, men they are like birds they are like uh, beasts and they also are like the free log of wood that is floating in the water, sometimes moving to one boat, sometimes going to another ship and so on. Who hath the plow land casts all his seed corn there and yet allows his ground more corn should bear. Thou da Danube, Danube is the name of the river, into the sea must flow. So she is like a log of wood and she is like, you know, um, uh, Foxes or goats or birds, they can never be chained to a galley, yet the galley is free. Galley is free would mean that it is it is free to go anywhere. And yet allows his ground more corn should bear, though Danube into the sea must flow. Danube is the name of the river. All rivers merge into the sea. So Danube must go into the sea. The sea receives Rhine, Volga and Po. Rhine, Volga and Po are the names of different rivers, right, across the world. And every river has to go and meet with the sea only. By nature, which gave it this liberty, thou lovest. But oh, canst thou love it and me? You love to be individual, even though you know that you will be merging with the sea. Oh, woman, can you not love me alone? Is a question again asked by the poet. More than thy hate, I hate it. Rather let me allow her change. Then change as oft as she is, and so not teach, but force my opinion to love not anyone, nor everyone. So change is the only alternative. Change is the only permanent thing in this world. And that is how women's love also change. Sometimes to this, sometimes to that. Like a bird, like a beast, like a log of wood on sea or like all the rivers merging into the sea. Yes, the sea will have all the rivers merged and similarly the women also will have anybody to love not anyone, not one do they love but everyone and anyone do they love. This is what is the constant thing in this world, he says. To live in one land is captivity. Captivity, a sort of seizure, a sort of stopping. So you cannot live on one land to run all countries, a wild roguery. And running around one land to another, moving about from one place to another is a sort of roguery. You are becoming a rogue by moving from one place to another. Symbolically telling that women by, through their infidelity and moving from one man to another in making their love, are almost similar to that of rogues, he says. Rogues, mischievous people, bad people. Waters stink soon, he says, if in one place they bide. He gives a justification as to this change of women and he says, waters stink. Stinking is to have a bad odor. 
bad smell water stinks soon if one if in one place they bide biding is to remain and in the vast sea are more putrefied putrefied is putrefication is a bad order so when they merge in sea also you get a bad smell over there so it is better that you are different but when they kiss one bank and leaving this never look back but the next bank do kiss so whenever the river is kissing the sea it looks as if it is the only one that is kissing the sea but in the next bank you could find another river kissing it so change is the only only alternative only permanent thing in this world change of life change of eternity change of everything so even the poet tries to come to the acceptance level that even if a woman changes her love towards man that's okay because if you remain with one you start stinking you start smelling rot in spite of the fact that it is a wild roguery but still he tries to accept it then are they purest change is the nursery of music joy life and eternity so it's a very beautiful line with which he ends the poem he compares the changing love of woman to birds to beasts to a log of wood that is floating on the waters to the various rivers that are merging in the uh, sea and he also says that if if the waters don't change and they clog over there in some part they start stinking and they have a bad odor and a bad smell so it's okay even if they change their love because change is the nursery of music joy life and eternity now in this poem the elegy is normally mourning song which is which is expressed by the poet for the death of a person here it is the death of the love of his beloved because his beloved's love is continuously changing from one person to another and is not sticking on to one person this changing love affair or this changing attitude of making love by women is been mourned m o u r n e d mourning is to feel sorry by the poet in this elegy the poem elegy 3 change by john dan is a fine example of formal and sustained lament in the verse form and it seems that he wrote elegies in different situations of life and in this particular poem the poet frivolously tried to defend a woman's fickle minded love in an ironical manner he freely compares women with birds and beasts which change their mates without discretion saying that women are like flowing waters and they are sweet only when they are mobile in their love relationships the poet advances with the thought by saying that change or inconstancy is natural for a woman yet he fears his mistress's inconstancy in his opinion just like the sea receives all rivers women are for all men even though he accepts the philosophy of variety in love ironically he aspires to maintain his natural right to be constant towards his mistress and to love not any one nor every one the philosophy in the poem change represents the naturalistic beliefs that love is the physical relationship which as a consequence of society's view has its basis in the natural law without any constraints of society the poet extends the analogical argument established by the means of figures of speech such as metaphor simile and analogies he begins his argument by asserting that women are like arts which value lies in its availability at all to all its speakers then in an image drawn from hawking suitors as fowlers women as the birds the speaker projects the idea that just like the bird is available to anyone with the ability to catch it so is a woman the analogy of a woman to sly foxes and lustful goats reiterates the naturalistic belief and conceives man as an animal who is free from the societal moral inhibitions and is only governed by his desire the poet states that in his opinion women hold men back from expressing their freedom in yet another metaphor women is compared woman is compared to a plow land from which the owner expects an immense harvest 
In still another metaphor, a woman is compared to the sea that receives all rivers. The poet aims to defending women's sexual freedom and compares it to the river Danube, which must flow into the sea. However, the sea also receives the rivers Rhine, Volga, Po and many other rivers. The poet complains that he cannot live with his this such type of wild sexual freedom of his beloved. He is worried that the nature is permitting his mistress to live in a wild roguery. She is becoming a rogue. Then, can she really love him? He believes that love is strengthened by likeness. So, he is further worried if their love will be constant or be changing. He cannot accept the indiscrimination in freedom. He is himself a non-devotee of total constancy in love. He argues that restricted or imposed love becomes inactive, still like the stagnant waters. Love with freedom is like the moving stream which always remains fresh and clear. Irrespective, the poet is willing to allow his mistress a degree of variety or change in her lovers because he knows and he ends his poem by telling change is the nursery of music, joy, life and eternity. He is then concerned about the definition of limits. He believes there should be limitations even in the freedom of love. However, these limits should not be strictly defined, for change is the foundation of a happy and lasting relationship. Yet, we are left to the wonder exactly what the poet really means by change. Elegies usually mourn the loss of a loved one, but instead of only concentrating on death, they may sometimes be about distinct kinds of sorrow and sadness. Elegy 3, change, belongs to such a category. The use of irony, wit, paradox, symbols and satire, as well as a variety and intensity of feelings made this elegy even more interesting and readable. The style of using skillful rhyme breaks diversity in the stress and the pause and also in the use of run-on method shows the originality of the elegy is written by John Dunn. The poem concludes with a very famous epigram, change is the nursery of music, joy, life and eternity. Thank you very much for being a part of this reading of John Dunn's elegy and also having an explication of the Elegy. Bye for now.